In this video, you're going to learn how to feed Sanity data into your SvelteKit site. So this way you can power your front end with dynamic content coming from Sanity. The first thing I'm going to do is to copy the npm init svelte command and I'm going to start a new project from scratch. I'm going to call it svelte Sanity. The script is going to ask you a few questions to set up your SvelteKit app. In this case, I'm just following the simplest of all, so we can focus on the sanity part of it. Once that's done, you can go into the folder you created, or if you already have a website, it's the same process, but start from one you already have. And in this case, I'm going to go right away and install our dependencies together with the new sanity client. Once the installation is done, we can go in and say npm run dev, and see that we have our blank website that is working. And right now it's based on purely static data. So if we go into source, routes, index.svelte, we must change the content manually so it can be reflected in the front end. So let's fix that. The first thing we're gonna do now that we already have our Sanity client installed is to create a Sanity client file, and that could be .ts, inside of your lib folder, utils, what have you. It's going to depend on your project, and just make sure you can access it from anywhere in your SvelteKit app. In the Sanity client file, we're going to import the Sanity client from at Sanity slash client. We're going to create a new client constant that we're going to configure our Sanity project with. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use this project ID of a public teaching project that I have from my Learn Grok course. I'm also going to set the data set to production, the API version to March 2022, and I'm going to use a CDN. You could also use a token, um, and there are some other configurations you could follow. Just make sure you check out the Sandy client documentation. Finally, we're going to export this client constant as a default module for this file. Once we have this, we can start actually fetching our data into SvelteKit. So the first thing we're going to do is going to routes. And given we already have an index.svelte route, we can just go in and add an index.js. This index.js file is where we're going to actually fetch data for the index.svelte route. So first thing we want to do is to import the Sanity client that we just built and create a get function that is asynchronous. This get function is what SvelteKit is going to call to actually start getting the data. In this get function, we want to define a new genesis uh, constant or whatever data you're fetching, uh, which is going to be parsed out of a fetch uh, call to our client. The fetch uh, function takes in a query, uh, a Grok query. So in this case, we are just looking for everything of the type genus um, from our backend. But given we have thousands of them, we only want to block or to limit and slice the first um, 10 of them. Then uh, we also want to pick specific properties because we don't care for all of them. So in this case, just the ID and the name. Uh, that's our Grok query. We are ready to get the genesis data, but we need to pass that back to SvelteKit so we can render the page. So we're going to go in and return a body. So the body of this HTTP get function is going to include the genesis um, array that we just built. So if I save this and I go into our localhost 3000, you can see, notice nothing changed. Take a look at the console, nothing changed. So first, let's go in and say console.log genesis and make sure we are getting the data. So if I were to refresh, there we go. We can see our data is here. If you are not seeing this data, make sure your Sanity client configuration is right and you're fetching from the proper client and you're running a proper Grok query that does return data. I would recommend using the Sandy Studios Vision plugin to test that. But given you do have the data, we now need to display that in the front end. 
So we're going to go into index.svelte and make a few changes uh, to display that. All right, so from our initial template, we're going to start creating a script tag where we're going to define a few Svelte specific props. So the only one in this case for this simple route is the genesis uh, array that we're getting back from our API route. So we're going to instantiate it as a, an empty array if there is, in, there is no data coming from the, the backend. And then we're going to start using this in our template. So we're going to start creating a UL element. And then for each genesis, let's instantiate a genus variable and render an ally with a link that points to the URL for this genus. That is the genus ID and display its name. So now if we save this, we should now see all of our genuses that were rendered uh, from Sanity Data. Now, if I do click on, say, a Beisha, we're going to get a 404 because there is no current route for fetching each individual genus. So to fix that, we're going to go into routes and create a new file that is going to be genuses or whatever is the route you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to do square brackets underscore ID, which is the name of the ID parameter we're going to use in this route, dot svelte. And let's just do genus. So if I save this, come back here, we don't get a 404 anymore, but we get a very generic uh, HTML value that doesn't change between whatever you put in your URL. So as long as it is the genesis slash a single parameter, we're always going to get genius. And I would encourage you to go into Svelte documentation on pages and endpoints to understand how this works. The difference is if I do more parameters or more um, subpaths, then this is going to return a 404. But we don't want to render something for whatever. Uh, and we want for Abasha to get the data for the Abasha genius. So to do that, like we did for the home page, we're going to create a file with the exact same um, name for the JS counterpart that fetches the SwapKit data. So in this case, square brackets underscore ID dot JS. And I'm going to pretty much follow the same pattern we had for the index route and build the ID for genesis. So again, we start by importing our client from our Sanity client. Then we create a get function that is asynchronous. But in this case, given we do have a parameter in our route, we want to access that from our route. So we destructure the params um, value out of the get function. And then we can access the underscore ID, which matches the same name as we have in the square brackets here. And that's the ID of our document that we should patch from Sanity. So now we can go in and define a constant genus that is going to be the result of fetching a specific query. This query is a simple get anything of the type genus that has this given ID. You're going to notice here we have this parameter. So it's a dollar sign underscore ID. It could also be without the underscore. Um, that's pointing to a parameter in Grok. Uh, so we need to pass that as a second argument to the fetch function. So in this case, I'm going to do an object and instead of it, pass in the ID. Now we just return this genus and the data should be there. So if we go in here and refresh, again, nothing changed because we have to go into ID and do that just of script. And then in the script, we're going to export let genus um, that's our property. And then here, I'm just going to do a JSON stringify. So JSON.stringify genus and format it nicely. So we do have our genus data. And I could also put in an H1 with genus.name. So it's more scannable. So a Beisha. And if we were to go into say whatever, we're probably going to break the site and get to 500 because we're assuming genus exists. But whatever is in the genus 
So coming back here to our um, page endpoint, where we get the data for the I genus's ID route, we should probably also return a 404 if there is no genus, or if there is no genus dot say ID, so we want to ensure that exists. So if we do that, now whatever is gonna return a 404 instead of a 500, which is what we want. And if we are to go to the home page and open say, I don't even know how to pronounce this, then there we go, it works. So just to recap what we've done so far, we started with a fresh SvelteKit install, we installed the Sanity Client dependency, created the Sanity Client um, file that instantiates a new Sanity configuration that you can access across your routes. And then in each route, you're going to go in and say, I want to fetch the data with the client, uh, given a specific graph query, and that's going to depend, of course, on your content and what you need. Um, and then you expose this data through this uh, body um, return in the get function. And then you can access whatever data you expose there in your Svelte components. Just also make sure that you do have the data because it could be that you don't and then you depend or you act as if it exists in its entirety, but it may be that the sanity data was deleted or that a given route is invalid. So do check in if you should have a 404 or in your templates if like, uh, perhaps you could do kit if. So if genus exists, then we stringify it. Otherwise, don't. In this way, we ensure that the site doesn't break. So I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and have a great day. Bye-bye.